time for the Glittering Top Gear Awards Ceremony, held here in front of whoever's bothered to turn up. <laughs> yes, it's where we celebrate all that's good and bad in the world of cars, here in the glittering West End of Guildford. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is now time for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, this is uh, awarded to the person who's done the most uh, to ruin the lives of Britain's 33 million motorists. Mm -hmm. And the nominees are Ken Livingston for not, for not realising that the introduction of bendy buses to London streets is about as sensible as introducing a fleet of oil tankers to the Shropshire Union Canal. Yeah. <laughs> Ken Livingston oh. for deciding that if you earn a living and pay tax and spend some of what's left on a car and then pay value-added tax on that and then buy some road fund license tax to put the car on the road and then pay fuel duty tax on the fuel <laughs> and value added tax on that fuel duty tax you should then pay 25 pounds tax <laughs> to drive into the center of the capital right and the final nomination is ken livingston <laughs> For putting my flat 50 yards inside the new enlarged congestion zone. <laughs> Jeremy, it's about 33 million motorists, not just you. Right, the winner. Where is it? Here we go. It's not Ken Livingston. Oh. It's the traffic wombles uh, who close motorways for six hours every single time somebody's door mirror comes off so they can retrieve it safely. So well done, then. <laughs> The Gas Guzzler of the Year. The nominations are the Range Rover Sport, which achieved eight miles to the gallon. The Bugatti Veyron, which achieved four miles to the gallon. And Hemel Hempstead. <laughs> That actually used up 60 million gallons of fuel, didn't move an inch. <laughs> We're calling it the Nissan Duke Award for the worst car of the year. <laughs> Nominations are the Mitsubishi Outlander Fev. Why is that on the list? Well, many, many reasons, actually. Chief among which is the way it beeps as you're driving along for no reason. You just go along and it goes, beep. Oh. Well, nothing's happened, it's just beeping. Maybe it's just bored. I'd be bored if I was a fair, but anyway. <laughs> other nominations include the Mini Countryman and the Renault Cab Jar. And the winner is... <laughs> it's the Nissan Juke. There you oh, go. Right. <laughs> well done. It's a, a deserved award. Oh, yeah, it is. The... The judges were particularly impressed with its consistent awfulness. <laughs> it was awful when it was first launched seven years ago, and it continues to be awful to this day. Well done, Dennis. The Worst Car in the World Award. The nominations are the Peugeot 5008. The Peugeot 3008. <laughs> the Peugeot 207. <laughs> The Perugia, oh, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. The Peugeot 308. The Peugeot 407. The Peugeot 607. And the Peugeot 4007. And the winner, the worst car in the world award, goes to, it's a surprise, it's the BMW 5 Series GT. Oh, well done. So, um... We've already had the Austin Maxi, OK, and it made no sense first time round. That really is a car. It's the answer to a question, if we're honest, that nobody's ever asked. Now, a worthy winner. Now the Top Gear Award for the biggest surprise of the year. Number of uh, options for us, but we're starting with this. It's James, and as you can see, he is running and he is on television. Yes, that actually happened. That did ha that briefly, happened. but it happened. Bigger than that, though, was Jeremy receiving a pie in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, that was a surprise for me. It was. I have to be honest. Uh, but despite her size, I mean, she was like a gazelle, yeah. that girl. <laughs> 
They're rear wheel drive. Shut up. No, no, they are. No. Because they're a bit, a bit shaky on the loose. Yeah, I know. On the <laughs> Absolutely. Please now for the award for the coolest car of the year. Here we go. Actually, it says Porsche 911 on it, but I've decided I'm going to give it to the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. <laughs> change it that's like going to the oscars and saying best actress is judy dent but i fancy uma thurman more so she's getting it i would do that <laughs> you would but you can't this is an award ceremony it's decided in advance by a panel of experts she can't okay let's it. ask the audience am i right no, it's, not yeah. it's not a poll either it's an award all it's right then if it's not a democracy it's a dictatorship and i'm dictating that the aston martin <laughs> v8 vantage is the winner Because you can't, I'm going to do it again. And the coolest car of the year is the Porsche no, 9. It, you it, can't, it, I'm not doing it again. I, I've just made it. We've made it. We've all agreed. It's the Aston. <laughs> he's eating it. No, 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 he's he's eating the piece of paper. Yeah, I'm, this, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing no, any more awards. No, 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 I'm not doing any more. You can't come in and change it. Look, I'm sorry. Just. <laughs> now, look. Pack it in, because the nation... <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not doing any more. No, we are. Look, the nation is on tenderhooks. We've got all these to do. We've got best tow car, best diesel. We've got best rear seat access in a three-door super mini. Not best doing any more. Space in a not doing executive any more. He'll car. just eat them all, James. I'm moving it on to the final film. Best electric mirror controls. James, I'm moving it on to the final film. See, the thing is, best OK... Strong. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> Next, it is the hard ass to follow, Nigel. This is given to the car with the worst looking rear end. Uh, the nominations are the Honda Civic Type R. Oh, I like that. No, you're wrong. No, you are wrong. It's just a car they wouldn't stop designing. Stop oh, look how many spoilers they put out. We'll have one here, and one here, and one there, and there, and we'll have one exhaust, two exhaust, three exhaust. It's a bit like your jacket. They just didn't know when to stop adding bits, unnecessary. <laughs> Pointless, stupid things to it. Might be in with a shout. <laughs> the next nomination is the Toyota CHR, a car styled by nine people who'd fallen out at a wedding. <laughs> but the winner of the hard ass to follow Nigel is. <clears throat> Ooh, it's the Land Rover Discovery! Mm. Look at that! <laughs> I think the problem is the designer, Jerry McGovern. Okay, we've got a picture of him here. <laughs> it's, and this is his dog. <laughs> and this is where he lives. It all makes sense. So it's only natural his car should look like that. <laughs> it's just all hutched up. Camera cars driving into the back of shot aren't the big bugbear on Top Gear. No, that is walkie-talkies. You see, we all have to have them in the car and they have to be switched on so that the director can warn us of impending disasters that lie ahead. Sometimes, though, in fact, quite often, the director just uses these walkie-talkies for chatting, which can be quite a nuisance when you're trying to do piece to cameras. I am a driving dog! <laughs> One day I will get a piece of camera in without someone talking on a radio. One day. Now, here's a taste of reality, wherever you are in the world. Beautiful winding road, trees either side. Stay off the <laughs> radio. I've just worked out what it is I don't quite like about Hammond's Ferrari. It's quite good looking and it is growing on me. Stay off the radio, stay off the radio. It's doing exactly what it's built to do. Drive, look oh, brilliant. I am a driving... <laughs> Shut up! With the Capri, Ford did what it's always been able to do really well, taking a very aspirational idea, two-door coupe, big bonnet, and made it available no, to the people. Oh, oh, off. The winner of the award for quiet fortitude and patience in the face of constant walkie-talkie interruptions is Richard Hammond for this. Actually, blasting through a nighttime alpine road 
with the roof off. That's a proud moment. Now, it's an exciting one next because it's the Appliance of the Year Award. Oh, I love this. It is a good one. Yeah, yeah. The nominations this year are the Bosch SMS 69L dishwasher. Yeah, yeah you know, because you remember the M, that was never as good. Yeah, that was, this yeah. is quite a content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Zanussi ZWD 14791-W1 washer dryer. That is oh. a beauty. Beat every group test it took part. Yeah, no, it's just that is spectacular. And the hot point SY thirty six W single electric oven. Yeah. yeah. Single, yeah. Do you remember single. the V that when they didn't have the yeah. control in the it's centre? Just, I'm, I want to know. Yeah. This is a really... Which one is it? Okay. Who oh, you were shushed. The winner, the squarest, whitest, white good of all, is the Toyota IQ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, a very popular category here. It's the weirdest Renault category. OK. <laughs> weirdest Renault of the year. The nominees are as follows. The Velsatis. It's a businessman's car, but only if your business is Enron. <laughs> <laughs> the Megane. A family car, but only if your family is the Osbournes. <laughs> and the Avon Time. It's a sporty coupe, but only if you don't want a car that's sporty. Or a coupe. <laughs> and the winner, the weirdest Renault of the year, is in true mad Renault style, it's the Nissan Micra. <laughs> <laughs> the judges noted that the designer had plainly got too much ink in his pen. Look at it, stop designing it, man. Step away from the CAD CAM unit. You've finished. That's enough details on one car. <laughs> And now, the award for the worst dressed presenter on Top Gear. <laughs> Whoa! And the nominations are... Richard Hammond's shorts in the London race. <laughs> yeah. And Richard Hammond's Spandau Ballet tribute coat <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Check that out there. Yeah. Well, the winner, and I have a good feeling about this one... Oh. It's Jeremy Clarkson from a British Leyland Cars film for his dry suit. What? I thought that was in the bag for more. Oh, 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 yeah. That's, I'm sorry, what about James May in the Aston Martin? Look. <laughs> ah, yeah. But I'm not actually dressed at all, though. All right, so... then. Right, uh, moving on to our next award. Um, it is now the Most Embarrassing Flirting on Television Award. In third place, James May for this fantastic, sonorous approach when presented with two girls during our Alfa Romeo trip through Warwickshire. I have been rescued and I haven't even broken down. Well, then you don't get... Hello. You have to start with hello. <laughs> What's next? Right, in second place, Jeremy Clarkson for this inept charm offensive on an American girl in our studio only the other week. American. You're American? Oh. You can't be, you know, we're near fat enough. <laughs> it, it was direct, it He's was a compliment. Flattering. No, it, it was a compliment, but that's not the winning entry because the winner is Jeremy Clarkson interviewing Will Young. Oh. Here he is. <laughs> Ourselves. Let's remind ourselves of when the magic first bloomed for us all. Here it is. <laughs> just got arms like pipe cleaners. You can quite trim, actually. I mean, not trim, fit. <laughs> fit. fit. I'm saying all the wrong things. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> You're giggling. You're giggling. You're giggling. You're giggling. That was a giggle. Who here would like to see Richard Hammond strangled on television? <laughs> you giggled. You did giggle. Uh, I want to just do this award, if I may. It's the Enemy of the State Award. The person who's done the most to harm the cause of the petrol head these last 12 months. Gentlemen, the nominations. The Chief Constable of North Wales, Richard Brunstrom, for his resolutely unpopular anti-motorist stance. There are no more nominations. <laughs> 
So, the winner is the Chief Constable of North Wales. This is the man who described speeding motorists as criminals. And then regretted it shortly afterwards when one national newspaper allegedly caught his daughter speeding. Actually, this is, this is also the man who said there is no more excuse for drifting over the speed limit than there is for drifting a knife into someone. <laughs> which, which, which really isn't true, is it? It's, uh, it's interesting to note that in April of this year, as his war on the motorists carried on, his force posted the lowest clear-up rate for burglaries ever on record. Tall, boxy and with skinny tyres, this shows great promise for hopeless handling. We're not, I'm not expecting much. No, it's going to be like cornering, I don't know, an office chair. Oh, that, that could feel brilliant. <laughs> no! oh, 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 it's oh, oversteering! Oh, 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 yes! That no. wasn't handling at all, that was No, that just was just chaos. Man. Fantastic! Oversteer and understeer all in one small package here. Now, can anything beat that? Well, yes, we think so, because it's time for the smart city car. Like the Canary, it's tall and skinny tired. And this is probably the bravest thing the Stig has ever done. Here we go. That's the left, we to the right, and there... <laughs> it's complete... <laughs> well, it never even, it never even nice. tried it. Oh, dearie me. Now, let's see that again from the Stig's in-car camera. Look, he turns the wheel, and the car goes straight on. World-class understeer there. And so the award for the car that goes round a corner with the least dignity is the Smart. <laughs> this year, though, it's awarded... To James. Yes, it is, because, you see, the thing is, the other week we had to record a short trail, the three of us, and James was mysteriously reluctant to appear on camera. Where's he just been? Right, I've been for a slash. Oh, he's got a dribble! <laughs> no, no, I'm got a dribble. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's stand up and do this, Liz. Right no, well, I think we should. Let's stand, Brian. Yeah, let's do it standing. It's much better. <laughs> so, full load like shots. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. James, are you not, are you not coming in? To, you may as well. Check out here. the dryness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, if you have enough. a weakness on this show, you die. <laughs> We're moving on now to the Lack of Continuity Award. Nobody's going to beat me on that. Well, you were nominated for your mid-season haircut, that's true. But you were beaten by Richard Hammond. Hold on. Why was he beaten by me? Well, <clears throat> I would invite you all now to pay careful attention to, well, actually, a clip from the McLaren film that you saw earlier. This was an early edit, OK? See if you can spot something wrong here. On the head turnometer, this thing definitely matches the Ferrari 488 and the Lamborghini Huracan. And then when we move on to the subject of power and speed, it actually beats them. A deserving winner. You switched to a completely different car. Yeah. Which brings us on to the next award. Oh, no. Which, yes, you'll like this. <laughs> it's for accidentally filling up the petrol tank of a supercar with water award. <laughs> oh, God. How? In the name of all that's holy, did you do that? Well, it's interesting, isn't is it? It is. Um, it was running low on fuel at the track, and rather than take it off to a petrol station, which is miles away, I filled it from one of the jerry cans. Which was full of water? Yes. And you didn't notice? No. When did you notice? When the tea started tasting funny, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it was when the engine sort of let go. How many supercars have you destroyed this year, Hammond? <laughs> Two. Two? How many have you driven? Two. <laughs> well, anyway, I'd like to present you with your Nigel <laughs> for appalling continuity. There you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's the forklift truck driver of the year award. <laughs> nominations are this chap. Here he is, look. You're all right. Back up. You're all right. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hang on. Oh! <laughs> but the winner with 
without a question or shadow of doubt, is this chap. Yeah, back up. Careful, careful. Oh, a bit quick. No, oh, that's not gone well. <laughs> Well, that's appropriate. We should now move on to the uh, Golden Cock Award. Um, this, of course, is, uh, is awarded. Here it is, which is demonstrating for you now. It's awarded to the member of the Top Gear team who has, in the course of making the programme over the year, been a complete clattering buttock. Uh, now, there were several cases uh, behind the scenes this year that we had to consider. Uh, there was the time when James May, whilst following the Range Rover camera car, somehow managed to lose sight of it for a moment and then start following an entirely different Range Rover. Uh, and he failed to notice for an hour that it didn't have a camera crew in it and was in fact nothing to do with Top Gear at all. Now, now, just to give you an idea of the degree of James's idiocy there, um, here's a picture of a normal Range Rover. There it is, look. And now uh, here's a picture of one of our filming Range Rovers. There is a, a giveaway there, yeah. <laughs> But in the end, there really could be only one winner. You may remember the steam train race we had earlier on in the year. Well, four minutes before the train was due to leave. That's four minutes before the race was due to begin. We were presented with the Jaguar XK, with the keys in the ignition, engine running, and the doors locked. <laughs> so the golden cock has to go to that man who was trusted to deliver that priceless car on that crucial day and left it with us in that condition. And that man was... The Stig! Yes! Yeah, he's here! He's here! He's here! He's here! Stig, the golden cock. Yeah? Oh, it's great! He's touched. He's touched, I can tell. I should point out, Stig, that is a rolling award. We have to have it back now to give it to next year's winner. So if I can have it... Yeah! <laughs> No, you have to, stick, no, you have have to, to give, give it back, so it sits in our stick, trophy give me, cabinet. Give me the golden cock. Just, stick, give me the gold. Oh, God. Stick, give me the, give me the gold. Give me the gold. I need the stick. I need the... Give me the gold. <laughs> no, not that. I need the golden cock. Stick, give me the cock. You've lost both cocks. <laughs> have you got his cock? Some of it. Yeah. It's You're amazing. Chasing. Is that all we have left of oh, the gold? it's weird. He fights like a choir boy, but you can hear his jaws just snapping shut in his helmet all the time. It's terrifying. <laughs> We move on now to the Top Gear Clot of the Year Award. Uh, the winner will receive this prestigious golden cock. It's, uh, it's for the presenter that's made the biggest mess of things, and we'll kick off with James. Ah, yes. Um, I think this will be the City Rover secret film. You may remember we weren't allowed to drive the City Rover. Rover wouldn't lend us one. So we went to a dealership. I was disguised with a camera hidden in my tie. I went in, I filmed it, I came out and I said that to the director, that is going to be brilliant. Here's what we saw. Here's me going in. And that's what I filmed with my tie. It's <laughs> the ceiling. So this is the City Rover. <laughs> no, it was, it was really? a fluorescent light. You can stop laughing. Why don't you tell them what you did? Yeah, well, no. You see, I turned up to film a car in the usual way, and the director said, hello, good morning, have you got everything? And checked, have you got your, the right clothes? Yes, I've, I've got those. Have you got uh, the script? Yes, I've got that with me. And have you got your silly hair stuff? Oh, yes, right. Uh, where's the car? Ah, forgot that. <laughs> hadn't, <laughs> hadn't brought the car and we were left it at home in Gloucestershire. Poor. Yes, very Sorry. poor indeed, but yeah. I fear... I fear mine may be worse, because uh, you may have seen the Land Rover Discovery film recently, drove it to the top of a mountain in Scotland. Uh, we used a helicopter to get the last couple of shots, and I said to the pilot, look, I've really got to get home tonight, can you fly me to Glasgow Airport? Uh, and I said to the director and the crew, can you drive the car back down the mountain? No problem, got in the helicopter, fell asleep, woke up an hour later. Of course, I did give them the keys. <laughs> no, <laughs> Really, if you want to land over Discovery, there's one at the top of a mountain in Scotland <laughs> being guarded by five skeletons. Now, um, this